we're going to start with quantitative analysis where we uh, take that information we had from our propionic acid uh, TMS derivative and we're going to build it into a calibration curve with a set of standards we've injected to try and identify or determine, calculate the concentration of our analyte in these two plasma samples. So in this Agilent Mass Hunter quantitative analysis software, that's called GC and LCMS, I've just gone and said uh, new batch. I've created a new batch in my folder. So I can call this batch one. I create the batch and then I can add the samples. So in this case, we've got our calibrants, we've got two um, unknowns or two samples, and then we've got our um, another calibration running at a slightly different time to evaluate some stability of this derivative. Okay, so let's quickly build a method. In these tabs on the top, we can say edit or create, depending on if there is a, a method loaded already. In this case, we're going to do a very manual setup. So we're going to add a compound, and we're going to say new compound, TMS propionic acid. The time segment it operates in is 1. The type of um, data we're working with is scan data. This is not yet the SIM method. We've, we've made things a little bit more sensitive. And we have a target analyte. And now we need some information from our qualitative analysis. So in this case, our peak was at 5.66. And recall that our qualifier and quantifier ions or quantifier and qualifier ions are these. So 131 is one of them. And the retention time value for this was, um, we can simply integrate this peak or let's grab that value, 5.67. And this is again very manual setup. There are other ways of incorporating the data if you've got something processed in Quan. Okay, so we've got one molecule. You can see it does highlight in our in one of the samples that we do have um, a peak there. But now we want to add addi additional information. So we do want to add a qualifier uh, ion, and that is just to make sure if um, that. 75 ion we do see in this qual analysis is present. We do want to see what the ratio of the two are and make sure that's consistent throughout standards and samples. So we've built in a qualifier and for now we can just evaluate uh, the batch so we can save the method and analyze it quickly before we build in any calibration levels. Just to see if integration is happening, if we're getting a decent peak area response and in this case you can see um, if we add some menus, we can see most of these peaks were detected. And in this case, you've got your quantifier and your qualifier ion um, within that retention time. Quickly looking at the area, you see almost a doubling, um, which is what we expect for this, this calibration range. We do see some peaks, well, not so much in the plasma, and we do see this last QC effectively. Okay, so let's start building in these calibration levels um, into the method. So we say edit again, concentration setup, and we're going to create a new calibration level. We're going to call it level one. And we had five calibration levels. So five was at 100 micromolar. We then did a serial dilution down. There we go. And that we will then associate with our um, calibrants. So let's exit. Let's analyze the batch again. Let's associate our calibrants. So I'm just using keyboard shortcut C here. C and then this could technically technically be a QC, um, and the level of the QC is equivalent to this one, so that's four. Okay, so levels are one, two, three, and you can see the values are being incorporated from there, and we start getting a calibration curve 
However, we do need to analyze this batch again to, for that to happen. Okay, so looking at uh, the information here, generally we start looking at linearity first of our calibration curve. Do we have a good R squared value, meaning that the deviation of these values are not too far away from this linear regression line? Um, and we can see our QC is being recovered um, after the batch is run, and you can see the reported value, the accuracy is 105%, which depending on your tolerances in your um, quality manual and so um, is either a pass or a fail. In this case for us it would be a pass. Um, so let's delve into making this method slightly better. In this case uh, we can see the um, qualifier iron ratios and things can be updated slightly so um, just for, for some of these we just want to make sure about qualify iron ratios. So I'm going to go back to the method, update uh, qualify iron ratios, and I have highlighted this P5 um, standard, and I'm just going to update that again. Go back to my home tab, analyze, and that will give us a little bit better overlay of these peaks we're seeing here. So just to normalize some of the uh, chromatograms more than anything else. And now it's important to look at the qualifier and ratios, and you can see potentially for this very low concentration standard, it's not worthwhile um, integrating it. We, <coughs> excuse me, uh, potentially on the the very low end of the uh, sensitivity for this um, method, but we can potentially just manually integrate this qualifier and peak we are seeing and seeing if it falls within the ratio of what we expect. It looks like we expect this 140 uh, ratio if you look at these other peaks. That is the, the ratio intensity of the qualifier or the quantifier to the qualifier. So in this case, potentially, this is too low. Uh, we'll keep it in for the sake of the exercise, but in other settings you, you might want to exclude this value or um, include um, a greater range of calibration points, five, five or more is convention um, usually for, for us. Okay, um, so we can then see um, uh, up to our 100 micromolars and then whether this is in the sample, these two plasma samples, with this particular type of data for GCMS, notice that the retention time is very consistent and that's because you've got a very long column, there's very little matrix interference from, for typically from GC. So in this case, it does not look like our samples have any of this peak. There's also no qualifier iron peak in that, that region. And that, again, helps us to gain certainty that this maybe 5.56 peak is not related because there's no qualifier iron peak. So we can manually integrate these and say there are no peaks. Likewise, there are no peaks for this. We don't see any qualifier iron in that region. And our QC again gives us a nice indication that after samples have run, maybe they were dirty or maybe the processing was in order, sample preparation wasn't that good, that the retention time still is consistent 5.66 um, and our qualifier iron ratios are still consistent. So that's very important to build in QC in your runs, especially before or in the middle and the end of the batch so you can assess if anything did go wrong, if there was a retention time drift because of some contamination, some um, buildup on the column, then um, this is useful. Okay, so in this case, we've got some, some data. We haven't got any um, uh, values for our samples, but we've got a nice calibration curve, and now these values can be reported. If you right-click on here and you say export table, you can then create a uh, Excel spreadsheet. For this particular analyte, and you will see all the information is in there. The peak area, in this case, it's reported as the response. The calculated concentration, which is derived from the calibration curve, and additional calculations can be can be brought in. Um, if you have any dilutions and so forth. When a sample has been manually integrated, you can also see it's indicated in the, the Excel spreadsheet. So that, in a nutshell, is how we take data from a quant or from a 
qualitative analysis, go to quant analysis, build in some of that information and create a quant method where we can then analyze certain samples if the sunlight is present or not and if it was present we would be able to um, assess whether it falls on the linear calibration range and then we can extrapolate and, and try the concentration in our samples.